This episode of the Eskimo Empire podcast is brought to you by the Well Endowed podcast from the Edmonton Community Foundation. The pod explores the impact of passionate people who are working to make Edmonton a strong, vibrant city to live in. The Edmonton Community Foundation helps people create endowment funds, and the podcast tells the stories of how those endowments intersect with the community. A couple of recent episodes talk about the COVID-19 Rapid Response Fund and the All In for Youth program. You can subscribe at thewellendowedpodcast.com. That's thewellendowedpodcast.com. Enjoy the show. Hey, fellas, we ain't gonna ever back down from nobody. I don't care who it is. This is a brotherhood. And if we stand strong together, we can't be denied. If one of us goes down, we have another and another and another that's ready to fight. So let's hit this field and bang them. Bang them. Bang them. Somebody light me up. Welcome to the Empire, it's the Eskimo Empire Podcast. This is Trevor Harris. Hey, how you doing? This is number 58, Travis Bond. This is Christoph Malamba Chimanga. Hey there, this is your co-host, Kenny Stafford. Hey, this is Ryan King. And Calvin McCarty. And you are listening to... You're listening to the Eskimo's Empire. You're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. The Eskimo Empire Podcast. Hope you guys enjoy listening. Welcome back to the Turf District for the Eskimo Empire podcast, and we are a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown and community supported. I'm Andrew, and I'm joined once again by my two favorite football family friends, Superfan Mike. Good afternoon. And Commissioner Kayla. Oh, hey there. Yeah, hey, look, it's nice to have you both back. I mean, not, I that, not that it, you know, it was fine for Mike and I to record, but, you know, we, we, we miss you, Commissioner. We like to have Oh, that. sorry, my nephew kind of took precedent. <laughs> that's, that's good. How was the grad? It was, I mean, can't really do much. So it's just more family yeah. stuff that we did, right? Um, but it was like a little drive through grad. So we went and they did like the, the tassel arrangement and picked awesome. up his diploma in the car and yeah, it was actually, it was fun. He was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> he was, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what he looked like in the picture. Yeah. Whatever. Oh yeah. yeah, like, whatever. yeah, whatever. yeah. More pictures. <laughs> More... <laughs> oh, it's congratulations for him. That's awesome. I'm glad we can uh, do something like that. Um, how's the last couple of weeks been for you, super fan? Uh, it's been good. It's been so busy. Um, you know, between work and then family and everything else, which is great. Um, doesn't leave a whole lot of time for anything else, but I did, uh, <laughs> Managed to work on the football room behind me, so oh, it's outstanding, man. Outstanding. Getting there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm got a I'm, lot of. I'm supremely jealous. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sitting in my own room, but I'm still supremely <laughs> jealous of yours. Yeah, <laughs> it's, no, awesome. it's it's been great. I, I mean, I got a lot of help on it, which uh, you know, it, it, it's the kind of thing that when you're putting together bookshelves and wiring them for lights, and then figuring out how you're gonna move the, an entire locker into the room. <laughs> You can't do it yourself, so thank God I've got a very understanding partner. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, no, yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Yeah, how heavy is that locker, by the way? Very. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's solid oak. I, oh my! Uh, once he got it set up and sent me the picture with it, uh, I messaged Dwayne Mandruziak and said, "Hey, if you happen to know of any lockers lying around, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm looking for one too. I'm like, well, I guess you get first dibs because you know you're Dwayne." <laughs> That's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me know if you find two. Um, let's uh, let's get right to our guest because uh, yes. this is a this is a very exciting uh, guest. We've we've we always love getting back and chatting with some of our uh, alumnus players, and um, we're we're very lucky this week as um, we have a, a running back who played with us from '93 through '95, uh, Grey Cup champion. And one of the players that is now on our all-time Esks depth chart yes, uh, at the running back position, uh, number 33, Lucius Floyd. Welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you for having me. Aloha. 
it. <laughs> yeah, <Indeed>. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If anybody wants to know how Lucius is doing, watch the YouTube live when he shows the beach, and then we can all cry because it's gorgeous, and we're not there. But uh, I also know as soon as I'm allowed to travel, I hope you have space for me, Lucius, because I'm coming to visit. <laughs> Yeah, you, look, you come down. I'll take care of you. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm here with one of my high school friends. We've been friends for 40 years, and he runs a couple of condos here in Waikiki. So you're taken care of. Sure. Ooh, very. Ooh. Oh, love it. Love there you it. Go. The, in, the invites, the invites there. You just gotta get here. All <laughs> right, I'll 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 find a way now. I'll find a way for sure. Um, how how are you? I know we talked a bit about it on the YouTube live, but how how are you doing through all of this uh, with the the pandemic and things? Uh, look, just just staying strong and and you know that mental endurance and that mental toughness. Um, I, I'm just going through it and just hoping all my family members and everyone's safe. Um, and you know just calling up my friends and talking to them. And I'm just fortunate enough to have a couple of doctor friends out in Australia just at the beginning, just told me this is really important for me to do and, and, and jot down a list of things and told me like, take this serious. So I, I've been taking it pretty serious since the beginning, huh? Awesome. Um, and having respect and, and, and just making sure that, you know, like even here in Hawaii, you know, there's people in the elevator, they might not feel comfortable with you being in an elevator. You can't get mad. You just say, go ahead. I understand because it, it affects us all differently, huh? So yeah. with that being said, that's where the respect comes in. So, um, but yeah, ho- hopefully, you know, everyone's doing well out there. And I just wish everyone the best and just to stay safe, huh? Yeah, that, that absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you're, you're living out in Hawaii. Tell us what uh, you've been up to the last little while. Oh yeah. So like, um, before I got to Hawaii, I was in Australia for seven years working out there. Yeah. Working out in Australia with the rugby players and athletes and things like that. So I was doing a lot of sports training out in, um, uh, Australia for seven years. And then I got back to the U.S. Uh, in December. And I've been in Hawaii working with athletes. I'm a uh, director over at I-9 Sports, where we have over 5,000 athletes, four different sports. Uh, we run four seasons here. So we have flag football, t-ball, soccer, and basketball. And the ages range from 3 to 14. So if you really want to go see a real good football game, I need to take you to watch the three-year-olds play. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, man, I mean, you're talking about go hard. I mean, those guys, those guys have no fear because they're so close to the ground. They're not worried about falling or getting hurt, you know. And, I mean, you just, you should just see it. And they all weigh the same. So, I mean, you have an advantage. I mean, if, if, if you're 20 pounds, that's pretty good. You probably got a little bit of speed because most of them are carrying about 25 pounds. So, you know, it's, I mean, it's the most exciting game that I can possibly watch. And, I mean, you, you got to put your your uncle in the end zone, and he's waving to you to come this way. <laughs> and it's, I've never seen so many running backs run backwards to go forward. But, I mean, that's, that's it's, it's 2020, so that's just the new, the new thing, huh? <laughs> Oh, that that is outstanding. That's that's fantastic. Um, let, let's go all the way back to when you were a young lad and playing football. Um, how did you get started? Kind of who who introduced you to the game, and when did you start playing? Oh, I, I played a lot of street ball, so I, I never put a uniform on to my sophomore year in high school. Oh, wow! So yeah, so I was playing a lot of street ball. Um, just in the streets of LA with my brothers and, and people like that and going to uh, and watching a lot back then on television. Uh, so uh, I went to Valley High School. I just remember one time in Las Vegas visiting my dad and said, if I ever move with you, I want to go to Valley High School. And that's the school I picked. And and I just learned everything from Valley High School. I, I was a center and a linebacker for my first two years. Wow. So... Yeah, I, look, I, I knew I was going to be a running back, yeah, laugh out loud, but I, I, I knew I was going to be a running back, so I was like, look, I need to start at the center so I can lo- know all the offensive alignment schemes on how to set up blocks. 
So that's why I started at a, as a center. No, that's not true. My coach just didn't know I could wrestle. <laughs> I like your positive spin on it, though. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So, so this one day in practice, all the running backs were hurt, and I got a chance to run the ball. And then Coach Dave Gerber put me at running back for one year, and then uh, the rest was history after that, huh? So. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's awesome. I became a running back. Yeah, that's that's how it happens. That's why I'm always telling kids, look, you just gotta keep working hard. You never know. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, that's that's how I became a running back. So after high school, you went to college at University of Nevada, and you were telling us earlier you had a game with 305 rushing yards back in uh, September of 1986. Uh, what was the college experience like? And tell us about that game. Oh man, look, I, I'm going to start off with the funniest parts. They, I mean, being broke is no joke as a college student. <laughs> I never had so many hot dogs and sodas in my life, but um, the, the experience was great. I mean, j- just the building part of being a freshman and coming in and seeing guys who are off to, to the next level, CFL or NFL. And, and, and putting in the work, you know, I went into college at 175 pounds. I left at 195 pounds, uh, just putting in the weight work, uh, the training, no shortcuts. Uh, just, I mean, just meeting lots of great ball players and following great ball players. I'll tell you a funny story. I was following uh, Mike Clemens from uh, uh, in the papers all the time. Uh, Corey Philpott, um, he's a good running back from uh, um, Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, really, oh man, I just, I just thought about it. But he, he was a really good running back. He's a Winnipeg running back in the 90s. Um, but so, yeah, so a lot of those guys are in the papers. I mean, I got a chance to play against Damon Allen and several other players. So the college experience was great. I mean, it was tough. It was hard. Uh, it just taught you perseverance um, and how to fight for your job and, and compete, you know. I mean, you're competing every year. Guys are coming from junior colleges. So, you know, like my saying is don't work out. You know, you got to outwork people. Yeah. <laughs> the difference between working out and outworking people. So that college experience taught me how to outwork people. So that was good for me. Wow. Awesome. So after college, you joined the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the other green, uh, back in 1990. <laughs> Did you know anything about the CFL before you came up here? Like, what was the, that first year like for you? No, I didn't. I didn't know anything about the CFL. I, I just so I, I had a chance to go to the Seahawks for two years and try out with the Seahawks. Right. And uh, after the Seahawks, um, the, the the CFL called. Oh man, like. Uh, Al Ford and them, uh, I think the Seahawks called up to talk to Al Ford and the general manager at the time. I just can't remember his name. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, it was a good experience. I just remember being on the plane going into Saskatchewan, and I saw the little prairie town, and I said, oh, we must be refueling. And then when we landed, they said, welcome to Saskatchewan. <laughs> so I was, I was a little bit thirsty, took my stuff to the hotel room, and, then decided I'm going to go in and get a soda. So I went in and grabbed a soda from the store, and it said raisin. And I was like, oh, man, I like raisins. I wonder what this raisin soda tastes like. <laughs> so I went up down there. There was probably about five or six people there, and I said, hey, what's this raisin soda taste like? She said, that's great. It's rich. <laughs> and I was kind of embarrassed, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun and exciting trip for me. <laughs> so... So that was my first day in Saskatchewan. Um, but, like, as far as, um, like, learning the system, I was, like, at the University of Nevada, I was just fortunate enough to have a coach by the name of John Pettis that I really wanted his running backs to be able to catch out the backfield and the block. So I was learning that from day one as a freshman. So for Perfect. me, the, the, the waggle was probably the hardest part. But when you got – Jeff Fairholm and Ray Elgard next to you. You just watch them do it. Those are two of the finest. Uh, I mean, that's just – and Don Narcisse on the outside. I mean, I, I kind of picked it up pretty fast, huh? Yeah. yeah I bet. 
<laughs> oh, goodness. <Yeah. laughs> well, you won the Jackie Parker Trophy for Best uh, Rookie in the West that year, and unfortunately, I stayed with the green and white, but we can't hold that against you because eventually, in uh, midway through the 93 season, you came and enjoyed the right green. Uh, do you remember the first time you walked into the locker room at Commonwealth? Oh, yeah. It's just, it's, I was just so excited to be knowing that I was going to be possibly getting back on the field and playing. And just the locker room, all the guys are great, from Willie Clef to Gizmo. My locker room is right next to Jim Sandusky, Damon. They're all doing practical jokes. And, oh, it was just fun. I just, I, I was excited to get there. And then, like, they, they, they thought, they, I, for some reason, they must have thought I was a rookie because, in practice, they tried to hand me like uh, some type of dead animal, uh, like <laughs> as a football, and I saw it, and I was like, "No, man, I'm not a rookie. Come on, don't treat me like a rookie." <laughs> so, so that was pretty funny. So I said, "This is gonna be good. These guys are just as crazy as I am. So we'll be able to have some fun." And 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 I just knew they had a good team, you know. So I watched them play, and I knew they had some good players. So. I, I was I was really excited to, to to finally have the opportunity to get back on the field with some some good players and and a good team and I got a chance to meet Blake Marshall so that was good you know yeah. that's a good that's a really good player and you know and he gave me some encouraging words and it's it's unfortunate how his career ended but oh, what a great football player tough guy and I mean the kindest heart. He just reached out to me and said, you know, you're here, do what you can. I just, I'll just, i never forget that talk with him. And so I was just excited to get there and just show people what I can do. And in saying that, too, like, obviously, with the excitement walking into Commonwealth, was there almost a sense of relief as well, just getting a chance to play? Man, that's terrifying walking into Commonwealth, 74,000 people. You better not make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was the first. I, I think there was over like fifty thousand people at that that Calgary game. I think it was. It was Easily. a high number. Yeah. So, with that being said, Commonwealth is by far one of the nicest stadiums I've ever played in. Um, I mean, you know, when you go inside Commonwealth, it's just di different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. can just feel. I mean, you can just feel it. You know, you can. It's funny, I tell people you run in Commonwealth and you just hear the roars just coming as you're doing something nice. <sighs> it's rising, just rising. And how do you not want to break a long run when you start hearing people just, it just starts from the bottom, bellows up, and you're just like, yeah, I'm doing something great. <laughs> and you just, I mean, so just that atmosphere and, and the players that you've known that have been in been inside that stadium. I mean, you don't even, we don't even practice there, you know, so it, it just has that mystique about it where you just, when you get in there, you know, it's all business. So. Oh, you're making me miss football even more right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we miss our second home at Commonwealth. Absolutely. Uh, and look, it's just where we are and I know we'll get back to it. And we, we just got to stay strong and, you know, I, it, look, I, I feel for everyone out there, but as far as we all just have to be safe and the guys to get back and it's just going to be just as exciting and just as fun as it was before all of this happened. So. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you you ended up, of course, being a massive ad for us <laughs> for that 93 season. Um and it was, uh, I, I know that one of, one of the things that I really noticed is, be, and you already mentioned it, you, you were that two-way player. You could take the ball and run it, but you could also catch out of the backfield. I couldn't believe actually watching the, that West Semi, how many times you were on a wheel route. And was that just something that you came in and, and Coach Rita was like, you're doing this? Or you're like, yes, please, can I do it? Like, how did, how did that work? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Coach Rita just, they, they designed that wheel route for me. I think, I think um, you know, just because just they can just see me running different things in practice and and then they just put that play in, design it, especially when you're one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker, that wheel route always works. And you can shake that head inside, come upside the sideline, play action. 
I mean, it doesn't work all the time, but if you can catch that linebacker cheating on our on our flat routes, then we'll come to that wheel route. So uh, it, it's just by design, and this depends on how aggressive the, the linebackers are. And, uh, you know, if they're cheating up, trying to stop our, our out routes, then we can do that wheel route. Um, and I, I love the wheel route. I, I mean, like I said, it, it, it works probably 80% of the time for me when I ran it. So yeah. <laughs> I'm always looking for it. I think I got 100 yards on a wheel route in Saskatchewan. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you were, yeah. we're, we're getting there. I got that down here. Oh. It's, going, it's, it's going up. Um, what, what we talk we talk a little bit there about about Adam Rita, but what what was it like playing for Coach Lancaster? Because he's he's such a, a legend as a coach for for us as a team. Oh, total legend! Oh, it was great. You know, um, look, I mean, he would talk to you. He just was educated about the game. Just a great guy. I mean, he's been through the system. He understands you as a player. Uh, I mean, just the nicest guy. I mean, when I left there, it was just total respect for him and the Eskimo organization. Um, even inviting me back after Eric Blunt, you know, uh, you know, uh, wanted to start running back position. Eric Blunt and I talked, and I sent him a nice letter and just, just the respect we had as a family. So, I mean, he was just that coach, you know, that that just brought you in like you were like his son. You know, he's explaining it with you like a dad would explain to his son. You're like, look, you got to be able to, you know, uh, just a calm demeanor. And, I mean, he was a legend. I saw his pictures all over Saskatchewan, you know, and was like, I want to be on the wall next to Coach Lancaster, right, Lancaster. And then to be able to to be coached by him. I mean, I've just been fortunate, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything uh, that's happened to me in the CFL or anything in the world, just because the experience has taught me so much to be who I am today. And that's just one of the mentors, uh, him and the whole coaching staff that's, that's helped me be who I am today. That's awesome. Wow. So, after you arrived, uh, you were here just a few days when we had to the Labor Day rematch against Calgary. Uh, we had lost the day before you got here, uh, which, of course, in Edmonton is just horrible. Um, so you came in, we won that game, and then it seemed to be we started gelling. You had those the last five games of the season, you won out and then went into the playoffs. Um, what was that like when you got there? Did you feel the team just gelled fairly quickly, or is it something you guys all really worked at consciously? Um, I, I mean, at the time, I think there was quite a few injuries. Yeah. You know, yeah. with Blake going down and things like that. I mean, when you lose a key component like Blake, that's tough. You know, that short yardage, the guy that can that can punish people and and set the tone of the game. So I thought that 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 was probably what was was hurt was missing. And then just to get in and and add yards and and I mean, I think the key components was there and I. It was just a running back who meshed with that Sally Rand with Damon Allen, where he can actually give it or not give it. So, I mean, a lot of that credit goes to him and Coach Rita and Coach Lancaster designing the plays. And, I mean, if you guys were there watching the games, you can just see that it was so so unpredictable. I mean, how do you guard that? You know what I mean? Um, And then when you do guard it, it's play action down the sidelines of Jim Sandusky or Eddie Brown, who – who runs like a four, four, 40 yard dash that no one can keep up with. Uh, you know, or Mike shows who can catch out the backfield as well. So you got two backs in the backfield that can catch. You've got guys outside all across the board, Jay Christensen, uh, uh, uh Eddie Brown, you got Jim Sandusky. I mean, Jim is such a great influence as well. I remember us being out there. He's supposed to run a 15 yard right route. And I was supposed to run like a, a 12 yard route, but the guy's pressing. So he told me he's going to run 12, tell me to drop it down to 10. We're out there doing plays like that, you know? So <laughs> that's how smart he was. You know, you got guys like that teaching you the game and how you can make adjustments. Uh, um, it, it's just, it's just hard to, hard to defend. And that's, I think that's what happened in a, a stellar defense. Can you imagine just practicing against that defense every yeah. day made us really tough with Benny Goods, uh, uh, Jed, uh, Larry Ruff. I can go down the list of guys who, who Tony oh. Woods, 
all of, I mean, you, you look at the guys that we have, Fleming, you know what I mean? You go, you, you go, you go down the list of the, not just the offense, but the defense. And it's a who's who of, uh, we have some of the best DBs. If you think about it, I mean, that's a good team. Not a great team. I can go down the list. I, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting all hyped up just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we had yeah. a couple of DBs on the old Canadian team that year. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and then, and then just the, just our special teams. I mean, just watching this, you just got. I mean, you got to hold your breath when he catches it because yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I think that was a key point too because I think when I was there, Giz was running back. I, I think I seen him run back at least six by myself. So, I mean, I mean. It's, it was all across the board. You, but you were you were a good returner as well. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I, that that West semi started with a thirty yard kickoff return by you, cause I, and I'm like, wow, you can really you, you you were hitting the hole pretty quick. I mean, don't get me wrong, I I know what you're saying. Giz is like, wow, but I thought you were an amazing returner as well. Oh, look, I appreciate it, but I, well, don't get upset. I'm gonna let you know. I did not enjoy returning kickoffs when I had to go in there and play offense. Yeah, yeah. I bet. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did it, and I, I, I didn't enjoy it, but I did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we talked a bit about the run on YouTube in the 93. Give us your thoughts on winning the Cup and, and about your teammates around you at that time. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, just just – the excitement and just the way the guys they they put in the work for that run, huh? And so it was just so much excitement for the guys and and just knowing that we we had that tough game to go up there to Calgary and then we had a tough team with Winnipeg. I mean that was a good game, that good cup. Mm-hmm. Winnipeg was tough. They were playing yeah. hard and they were flying around. So uh I mean I, I just think it was uh those those nine games and then the playoff, it was just it was just that enjoyment was just part to bottle up, huh? And everyone just got really excited and tears were flowing and and all the guys hugging and you know saying I love you because I mean it's 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 hard to to win a great cup. I mean it's, it's not easy. I mean the year after we tried to repeat and we were almost there and then yeah. ended up in the BC Lions so. We know how tough it is, and if you can get on that good run and then make it all the way to the Great Cup and actually win it, I mean, there's a lot of enjoyment and excitement. And then, and then plus, you did it for the fans and all the people who supported you, so then you're even more excited for the city and the town and, and all the people that, you know, cheer for you and go out and spend money and, and get your jerseys and things. So that, that, that's where a lot of my excitement was as well. And not to mention that with the Grey Cup comes amazing parties. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I go to an amazing party? Let me see. <laughs> if I did, I don't remember it. <laughs> it must have been amazing. It was that good. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> yeah, been... so, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah, we did celebrate, but... I just don't remember like too many parties, but I think we all celebrated in the hotel and and things like that. Because that was a night game. It got it was pretty late when we got mm-hmm. done with that game, um, so a lot of guys were sore. And like I said, I did I did sustain a concussion in that game, so I was still kind of not really. Uh, I'm just basically trying to recover from it. Huh? So, have you been back to any uh, Grey Cups after that? Just as a spectator, or even. Um, I want to say I was at a great cup in BC because after I, after I left Edmonton in 98, I moved to BC, um, in 99, it was hanging out with Orville Lee for a bit. And I think I want to say I went to a great cup out in, in BC. Oh, okay. I want to see it was there. Yeah. 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 So I want to say I did go to a great cup. I hung out with Orville Lee. So yeah. And, and I'm looking to get back and, uh, I have a friend in Saskatchewan. I have friends in Edmonton. Miss Matthews from Saskatchewan came and visited me out in the U.S. And, and you know, she's a nice lady. She's older and 
like uh, in the late seventies, but I got fans all over that communicate, yeah. talk to me, and and things like that. So I'm looking forward to um, maybe in the next uh, you know six months to get back to Edmonton. I have my son there, Devon, uh, Raphael Floyd. He's down there, so um, he came out to see me out in Los Angeles. So I'm looking to get back and just you know, go back to the stadium, say hello to people, and and um, hopefully it'll be, if not at the end of, by the end of this year, it will be next year for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. You, you should know at least one face there if Dwayne Mandrusiak's still with us. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man, I talked to Dwayne not even, uh, uh, what was it, maybe a month ago, maybe five weeks. Norm, Norm Fong, I talked to Norm Fong. Yeah, uh, uh, when I, when I, Yeah, when I left the Eskimos. I did some work with Dwayne. I was manufacturing uh, Under Armour style gear for for football players, and Eskimos was actually uh, actually purchased some of my gear for two to three years. Dwayne's a great guy. Gave That's me the awesome. opportunity, and like I said, I just spoke to him. I mean, that 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 guy had probably has. About, what does he have? Probably about forty championship rings or something. <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, that 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 that'd be something interesting to find out for you guys. How many championship rings did Dwayne Mandrusiak? <laughs> he's got eleven. Uh, yeah, he has eleven. There we go. Yeah. I, I, that that guy is an amazing guy. The funniest guy, and and, and it's so funny because. When you first get there, you get the droopiest socks you ever seen. They don't even have elastic on it. I don't know what they are. I don't even call them socks. But then you got to befriend him and, and talk him through it, and then you get you some real socks. <laughs> That's, that sounds about, very about a, a week or two weeks, and that was funny. I was like, what are these? These aren't socks. I can't even pull them up. <laughs> you know, so it's so funny. Yeah, so look. He's an awesome guy, and like I said, I, I probably reached out to him about maybe about a uh, five weeks ago. So I'm always in contact still yeah. with him. That's yeah. awesome. That that that's fantastic. Now, you did play two more seasons for us in in the green and gold, um, and you talked about it already. But you had that extra special play on July seventh of nineteen ninety five with a hundred yard TD reception against Saskatchewan. Um, obviously, you remember that play, and and do you uh, do you remember that moment of taking off on that route? <laughs> It would be so upset with me. I don't really remember a lot of plays. I just know that I scored. It's so funny. My friends tell me about more football in my plays than I remember. It's amazing. I, I just remember catching the ball, running as fast as I can. And it was 100 yards. And it's funny because I have my friend, like I said, I, that I played uh, high school ball with. He's telling me about games and 1984. He's like, remember that game? I'm like, what? I didn't even know we played that team. I was like, yeah, how do you think you come around the corner? You came around the corner. I hit that one uh, defensive end. And then the next thing I know, you're down the field 74 yards. I'm like, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> my friends are telling me more about my runs and, and, and things. Uh, I, I, I think I just enjoyed it. I just had fun playing and making plays. So, don't get me wrong, I do have the memories and I look at the articles and stuff, but most of the time when you're in that moment, you're just trying to make a play. Yeah. So when you're making that play, you catch your ball, you juke a guy, whatever you may do, and then you're running down the field. Next thing you know, you're celebrating in the end zone. So a lot of it's like, it's kind of a, I don't want to say it's a blur, but it's just, it's just, it's just the enjoyment and the fun of knowing that you scored and you did what you had to do to get into the end zone. So. To, to me, that's just you're living right in that moment. That exactly. That's what it sounds like to me, which we could all take a lesson from. <laughs> so uh, yeah. uh, that's a that's a perfect example. I mean, that's that's how I played football, huh? Just being fortunate enough to to to, to be able to get to the level and the CFL accept me in because I mean, there was more t- there was guys totally more uh, that had more talent than I had. And, and they didn't go far, so I, I respected the game. Uh, I always was told no one man is bigger than the game. So that's how I lived, and that's how I played. 
Awesome. That's fantastic. Now, in 1994, in your first full season with the Eskimos, um, you showed you were a triple threat. You had 2,606 all-purpose yards that season. In Esk's history, that's the second highest season only to Gizmo in 92. Uh, is that something that you look back on now and realize that, you know, how special of a season that was? How many more yards did Gizmo have than me? Uh, about 115, maybe? 150? Uh, yeah. I'm looking back now. Maybe I should have got the ball a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. I love Gizmo. Look, to, to, to be behind him, is, you know, like to just have that many yards. I mean, just showed the confidence that they had in me to give me the ball, and and just the work that you put in during the off season to be able to accomplish that. And and look, I, I know that'll be there, you know, probably for a couple more years, or maybe someone can break it next year. But just to be mentioned in the same name as Gizmo. I have so much respect for that guy and just his play and just what he could do and and all the players that's come through the Eskimo organization to be up there on that list. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it's just a testament to if you work hard, good things can happen. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so uh, outside the obvious of the Grey Cup win, uh, what are your favorite memories that the Esks? Oh, my favorite memories. Oh, man. I think some of my memories is just sitting back there on kickoff returns, giving Gizmo a hard time telling that number 54 <laughs> said he's going he's gonna to try to hit him as hard as he can, and Giz getting all excited about it and saying, what's up, what's up, what's up? And, um, and, and just the, the, the locker rooms and being on the bus with the guys. I, I think I enjoyed really just, just – Having that bridge and Damon Allen's across the from my locker. His, I mean, uh, Jim Sandusky's next door to me. I mean, just just spending the time with the guys in the locker room, messing with the trainers, telling them they don't know how to tape, and them getting upset and wanting to rip the tape off again. You know, I'm just kidding. Just the fun <laughs> and the things that you can, the memories that you can, and the fun fun stories that you can tell. But then also going out there to go to battle with those guys and and knowing that, you know, at any moment, you know, somebody's about to make a big play. Don't worry about the score. Let's keep grinding together. And, and, and whatever the outcome is, is the outcome. But knowing that we all gave our 100 percent out there in the, in, in the heat of the battle. And that's what I think. I enjoyed about that 93, 94 team. It's just that that's where we were. You know what I mean? We were those guys. We grinded out, you know, and, and, and we didn't point any fingers. We just grinded it out. That's wow. Sad. To be a fly on the wall, hey, guys? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I feel like we're kind of a fly on the wall right now. It's, right it's now, great. yeah. yeah it's, it's great. Um, now, you you finished up your career in Memphis. And so I, I do want to – I just want to ask, what what was that like playing CFL game in an American city? And and Carlos Verdi, who, who was um, with the CFL before, he asked you to rate that American experience on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, it was a little bit different because Memphis was so far and it was like really detached for me as being in Canada starting yeah. my career, you know, and then being detached to the U.S. Uh, I mean, being uh, traded to the U.S. So, um, look, I, I know what the CFL was trying to do. And, I mean, it would have been good for the league if we could expand it. Um, but at the same time, I just didn't. I just didn't feel the connection there, huh? Mm, okay. um, I mean, with Baltimore and some of those other teams at the beginning, they had some really good teams with Coach Matthews and stuff out there. So I, I thought it worked for a little bit, um, but I, I just for, for some reason I just felt that they would have went into North Dakota, some a little bit closer to to Canada. Mm -hmm. It might have worked a little bit better with people know about the Canadian culture and CFL and things like that. I thought it probably could have worked a little bit better. Um, as far as rating it, um, look, 
I love the CFL, so I don't really want to put any negativity on the CFL. That's fair. Uh, but but for me, my own experience, I would say it was because I still was playing. And I, look, when I went to Memphis, uh, Damon Allen was there. Mm-hmm. I think Ricky Foggy was there as well. So some of the players were still there. So yeah, it, was, it made it, the transition a little bit easier for me. So out of a 10, I would say for me it was a 7. Oh, that's fair. That's awesome. Uh, now, do you still have your Memphis Mad Dogs jersey? Because the jerseys were pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I was pretty much, yeah, I kept, I kept my jersey. I was lucky enough. Nice. I think I had 33, yeah. So, yeah, so I did keep that jersey, um, the Grey Cup jersey. Um, yeah, so I, I do keep quite a few of my like jerseys and things like that. But yeah, look, it was great as far as like Adam was even at the Memphis Mad Dogs. Yeah, but I mean, you can't you can't beat the name the Memphis Mad Dogs. That's you know right. what I yeah, mean? Exactly. Yeah. You play for the Mad Dogs, you're the Mad Dogs. You gotta, know how to say it. You gotta draw it out a little bit. Who'd you play for in Memphis? The Mad Dogs. You know, you see people's eyes when I say that. Like, whoa, whoa. That was, have a good day. That's it. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Because they, they, I can just imagine them going home and looking up the Memphis Mad Dogs, and there's no Mad Dogs, and they but that guy was a Mad Dog. That guy was, yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Uh, well, Lucius, we could probably keep you all night uh, with lots of other stories, so we'll we'll just have to have you back on at another time. But I, the 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 one question that we ask all of our uh, alumni players that come on uh, is what what does the Eskimo way mean to you? Oh, look, the Eskimo way to me is uh, respect, perseverance, um, love enjoyment of the game and 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 just believing in yourself and leaving leaving it all out on that field in commonwealth um and i mean you just know when you're there and you're in that locker room um there's some high standards and to live up to those standards you got to be a special person and a special player so my hat's off to all the guys that step in that locker room and get on that field and and play for that afternoon. Oh, that, that is fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, tell everybody where can they uh, find you online if they want to connect with you and, and kind of see where you're at. Oh, yeah, you can just find me on Facebook, Lucius Floyd the Third. Um, I'm usually probably pretty much on Facebook uh, yeah. as social media. Um, I do have other uh, social media, but through my Facebook page, you can find me. But just Lucius Floyd the Third on Facebook, and and then uh, friend me and uh, follow me, like me, whatever whatever you decide. Even if you're not a fan of the Eskimo, still like me. <laughs> <laughs> I I know you still got some Rider fans that jump on there, so that's uh, all right. I, <laughs> yeah, I still have some Rider fans. It, it's awesome. It was a good time there. And look, I, I appreciate everyone in the CFL. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the fans for giving me the opportunity to be able to show what I can do and and look good luck to all of the, the, the up and coming flyers and, and let's just keep this going and, and and have some fun with it and and, and keep the CFL striving and strong. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lucius. Uh, Let's take a really quick break and we will be back with uh, more on the football movie bracket and a bit of Esks and CFL news. This is Blake Dermott and you're listening to the Eskimo Empire podcast. You can join the Empire online. Find us at eskempire.ca. Check out all the new blogs and then follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For more history, follow at Esk's History on Twitter. And even more of my pics on Esk Empire Photo. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to help the pod grow. Thanks again for listening. Let's get back to the show. This episode of the Eskimo Empire podcast is brought to you by Straight from the CPA's Mouth, a new podcast series created by the CPA Education Foundation and funded by the Heshi CPA Knowledge Center.
Alberta's Chartered Professional Accountants, or CPAs, are experts on a wide range of topics and issues of interest to Albertans. Straight from the CPA's mouth has discussions on topics important to you, from leadership skills and achieving career potential, to financial literacy and how to make your tax refund bigger. Whether you're a university student, a new Albertan, or a parent, you'll find something of value in this unique podcast. You'll find Straight from the CPA's Mouth on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or on the CPA Education Foundation's website at cpaalberta.ca slash foundation. That's cpaalberta.ca slash foundation. Now let's get back to the show. All right, so we have a little bit of ESCS news. Um... Nothing terribly exciting to talk about, I must say, but we do have a little bit of Esk's news. Some things um, have happened. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we, we didn't bring it up specifically uh, with Lucius, but of course we did just find out um, that one of his teammates um, passed away uh, just uh, the last couple of days here. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I, I do want to send our uh, our thoughts out to his family. Um, uh, great player, and uh, I'm sure people who uh, listen to the show probably already know who it is. So we can probably leave it at that. Um, I do also on that same note, before we get, I guess, in, right into our ESC news, I do want to send a, uh, a football family shout out to our good friend Shelly yes. um, in Okotoks. Um, I know that she's uh, dealing with a bunch of stuff um, with uh, Darcy passing away with cancer. And uh, it's very, very tough for all of us to hear. And I can only imagine for her. And she's been a massive supporter of our show. So yeah. uh, Shelly, all of our thoughts and love and hugs go to you. And uh, I'm hoping that will help in some way or another. So um, now let's get to our news. So uh, Christian Jones was released. Did you guys hear about it? <laughs> no, tell no, me more. Really? It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Um you know, a, a, a poor choice in tweets, um, and uh, and and then a little bit of doubling down, and uh, that didn't. I think it was the doubling down became the issue. Um, yes, I think so. And uh, so he he was released. Um, I was happy to see a few days later that there was uh, he had uh, seemed to have taken it a bit more as a learning experience. And and I know Ryan King was involved and Janice Irwin was involved and they were doing right. some some, uh, you know, group conversation about kind of where things should be um, in the LGBTQ uh, community. So um, I. I, I I was impressed that that was happening and um and and I think you know there maybe there is a chance at redemption but at the time that was the I think that was the right move. Yeah, I think that listen, none of us are perfect. Um no. as you know, some of us are less perfect than others. Um but if it's a chance that if you are not exposed to that uh type of situation be able to say okay, you know what? This is how I've always lived, but let me find out from the other side and, and maybe I can learn. Right. I, I think that's just an opportunity that we all can be taking in many areas. Absolutely. And uh, the fact that Ryan King was with him. Uh, Ryan, of course, is our, our player rep with the union. Yes. Uh, and a member of the executive. And um, I, I think that just being able to, to go together and, uh, you know, have a conversation, a dialogue going with that is just it's going to go well for both sides and everybody. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lost art, isn't it? Actually having conversation without being vitriol and full of hate. <laughs> right. That's actually a really good point. Yeah, it is a bit of a lost art these days uh, to just sit and have a conversation, right? So, Even um, if you don't agree, right? Like you can mm -hmm. come to terms of just being respectful on each side and every side and mm -hmm. having some kind of dialogue and, you know, choosing your words and sometimes just shutting up and listening yeah. is really, really helpful. And it goes for every type of person, every yeah. single type of person. So I think it's a learning experience for everybody. I would agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now let's talk a little more CFL news because we do have a little bit of that. Um, we have a quote unquote uh, drop dead date, so to speak, yeah. I guess, of uh, July 23rd. On, uh, Coming up. To, yeah, that's the thing. It, that is basically a, a couple of days after we're recording the next show. So um, so we're going to we're going to figure out how this is all going to play out. Um 
Now, in this this time frame, uh, the CFL and the CFL bleh, easy for me to say the CFL yes. and the CFLPA uh, need to meet and discuss a new CBA with a bit of an extension. Hopefully, uh, the return to play options, the health and safety guidelines, and the now the other caveat that was put in there is secure some government assistance. Yes. So. Um, I think that is a really tall ask to try and get that done in a matter of two and a half weeks. <laughs> Both of I you think sighing be at the best might, might be the best way to start the show. Uh, <laughs> Double sigh. Yeah. Uh, I think that the, uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about how the government might have more of an appetite to deal directly with the players or maybe through the PA right. than handing money over to the league itself and then having the league distribute the money. Right. Um, when you're at work and you're getting CERB or CURB or however you want to pronounce it, yeah. um, they don't pay it to your company and then your company pays you. It's sent directly to you. So I think the similar sign of situation is if they're going to pay the players, the government would send them money directly. Right. Or, or yeah, or some type of program that'll that'll help right. with that, right? So, yeah. um, and, and, and really, I think that's one of the, I, all of those issues that I just mentioned are huge. And they're they're big undertakings, but that one is definitely going to be probably the most difficult to quickly have a result. I think. Right. Is it both? I'm guessing the CFL and the CFLPA in these conversations. It sounds like it's both now. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was one of our our things that we had said a couple of weeks ago was that it just seemed like it was always just the CFL. Now it does seem like it's both. Are you getting that vibe, Mike? Yeah, I, certainly for what I'm seeing on Twitter and, and Facebook and other social channels, it does seem like they're starting to play nice together. <laughs> yeah. For the love of God, just play nice together. <laughs> so, yeah, just find a way to be nice. Yeah. Um, I know one of the things that was uh, talked about uh, or has been gone quite a bit around on um Twitter in the last 48 hours or so is they're talking about the possibility of a six game season uh, with eight teams in the playoffs. Right. Um, can I get your guys' thoughts on that? I'll start with you this time, Commissioner. So, wait, one team out? <laughs> like, yeah, one team out. Yeah. One playoffs, division? Yeah. Like, um, no West East or still? I'm sorry, I've been neglecting all things Twitter and social media. <laughs> I get it. Lately, yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent get it. Um, no, it, it's just eight teams is all I've heard. So I don't know if they're going to stack them all into one division or if they're going to do something a bit different. I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't give a crap. I just want some football. <laughs> I don't honestly. I'm being honest. I don't really care how it pans out. I just desperately. I am sitting here having that 2015. Uh, 2015 West final in the background and it is actually painful and I'm not even watching it I can just see the players running out of the corner of my eye and I'm like I just need a glimpse something pigskin on a turf that's all I want. <laughs> wow that's really uh yeah that's... do I seem desperate I feel like I seem desperate <laughs> I think we all feel desperate oh we're desperate all right that's right um super fan your thoughts on that type of season you know, if you would have asked me a few months ago what I thought about a six-game season, I'd be like, yeah. you can't have a six-game season. It's not even much of a season. Correct. If you ask me now, and you are, I just want football. And <laughs> Right. Yeah. If it's give, me a, be, give me a tournament. I don't care. Just give me something. Yeah. Something that's going to be um, live football. We don't know what's going on. Uh, we don't know the, the predetermined ending, like watching an old game is going to be. The 2015 great, uh, West Final was a great game, but we know we win. So, yeah. if, you know, when Calgary starts coming back at the end, you're not like, oh, no, I hope that, you know. <laughs> you know it's going to end with a happy ending. Yeah. Well. Uh, as oh all my. Calgary losses are. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what goes in the locker room, I don't need to know. Um, no. <laughs> but. You know, just give me some sort of live football that even if we can't go, we can just have to watch on TV or maybe a few people can go, you know, a small section of the crowd can go, whatever. I just I just want football. Yeah. And I want to make sure everyone's safe when they do it. Yeah. I, I think that's the biggest thing for me is I 
if it's six games, if it's, you know, if it's a round robin play, if it's a, you know, you, you have four games and you start the playoffs, like however this turns, I I would like to see some football. I want to just make sure that it's done safely so that we can enjoy it. And the players aren't getting sick like that. That's a huge deal for me. Um, but if if the option is six games or nothing, I, I'll take six games if you can make. But it will work. the players? Because it's gonna be a the, prorated yes. play check, right? Yes, so. absolutely. And that's gonna, and then you're gonna see things like James Wilder Jr., who has moved on to do coaching Retired, in yeah. the states, uh, just because that was better for him and his family and, and all the power to him. And that I don't blame him. Yeah. Nope. Me either. And that could happen. Um, for, for, uh, do, do you think there'll be like a flurry on signing every veteran player available? <laughs> well, Darrell's going to be still around. He's on un- he's unsigned. <laughs> That's true. I personally think that, you know, Patrick Mahomes should just fund the entire league for a year. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what? He'd still have money. She might have He'd well. have money left over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Even if he funded it for the whole year. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like he would be fine. Yeah. He could he just be, he could just become the CFL, uh, owner, like the CFL yeah. owner. Yeah. Cheapers. Holy man. Well, I think Quaku's tweet was, I just want six months of that, t- of that 10 year contract. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You think you could survive on only twenty seven and a half million? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Oh. <laughs> only, yeah. That's six months worth. Yeah. Wait, yeah. was it? What was it? One hundred fifty. Four hundred and fifty million over ten years. Yeah, forty five oh. million a year. Oh, I must have read that. That's... Yeah, it's wow. uh, again. It's okay. It's it's you know it's back when that was considered a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, just, like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a few hours five, ago, five minutes ago, yeah. That's what I was just gonna go with. Holy bananas! Yeah, yeah. that is a that is a lot of cash. I, I and and the thing is, is even the NFL doesn't have a plan for specific return to play. Like they're just yeah. moving forward, so it's going to be very interesting how that plays out as well. But um, let me tell you, this next two weeks is going to be intense for us as CFL fans to see what happens. And Edmonton sports fans in general, I mean, with the Oilers going to training camp in just, you know, a matter of days, like a week. Yes. And then them starting their season, what is it, August 1st is going to be the playoff against Chicago? I think that's what it is. And and Edmonton being a hub city, there's going to be lots of hockey going on here. Yeah. It's going so to be interesting. Just gonna roll over into the next season as soon as the playoffs are done or how do they They'll have a short break probably but yeah otherwise yeah it'd be a very short break yeah. let's see if we can get through the playoffs first yeah exactly yeah that's yeah. true that's true. Well, let's see if we can get through the 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 first round of play and see what yeah. happens yeah yeah well we have the cbl too they announced their summer season for the yeah. two months so at least we get some canadian basketball action if there's any basketball fans out there um but- i don't know what's happening with the nba but now the CBL, they're doing um, just a hub city. Is it Winnipeg or something? Yeah, the CBL. It's in Ontario. I think it's like oh, Saint okay. Catharines, okay. if I'm not mistaken. And I still think that they're doing the um, the actual playoff championship in Edmonton. Oh, interesting. I I believe so. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's the two cities. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, are do they are they gonna do they have some way to put those on TV or something? Cause yeah, where, where yeah they, they have gonna... a contract. Sorry. They have a contract with CBC. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I'll yeah. be, so excited catch to watch. be excited to watch any kind of live sports. So I will right? take that. Yeah. And oh I was getting into gosh. that basketball last year, so I can, yeah. It's a lot of fun guys. Stingers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We could, I'd, we could I'd be just watching darts and spelling bees <laughs> at this point. <laughs> if that's all we had. Really <laughs> so maybe you should check that out. <laughs> Whatever. I told Nicole we should pick up a bocce ball and just play it in the back and film it just for fun. Yes. <laughs> you can rewatch it. Watch this shot. Woo. There we go. Yeah. You need four cameras, people zooming in. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, your shot is too wide. Can you get in closer? Come on. Come on. You got to have it zoom in on the ball as the ball gets closer. As it gets, I know, right in and oh, it'd be exciting. Yeah, I tell you, we're, we're going to find a way to make this summer exciting. I don't care. Who it exactly. Is. Yeah. Or, um, or for that matter, our, uh, our uh, sim league. We could do that. Yeah. We should just if, record it. 
See if David Morley will do play by play in color. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> that would be a... Roll the dice and then Morley tells you what happens. I think I should oh, ask him. We yeah. can't afford it. But yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know that he'd. Yeah. I'm like, hey, Campbell, you need some work. Come on. Come on. You get, I'll, we'll roll the dice. You just tell me what the play is. And in your voice, we're going to record the whole thing and we're going to post it on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> with with every in between every play, Jed Roberts going YouTube live. <laughs> it's just be great. I, people will people were our subscriptions are going to go through the roof just on. that. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah, because everyone loves Dave Campbell. Well, it's, who doesn't? I, I, no one that I know of, because he's amazing. Yeah. Exactly. We were actually talking. Uh, uh, Dave and Morley said, "I've got an old, old uh, you and I watched it actually, the 1961 Labor Day game." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, uh, yeah, so Edmondson, Calgary, and uh, they said, "Well, it's silent. Well, we could do color and play by play over that. <laughs> like that would be amazing. It's like only 20 <laughs> minutes long. It would be so cool, though." To yeah, have them I've got... actually call it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, I think, I think we need to make that happen. Yeah, I totally think so. Yeah, yeah. you know, there's probably some broadcast rights, but whatever, we'll work that out. You know, it's whatever. Come on, somebody's gonna watch it and go. You know what? That's totally worth it. Just leave it. Exactly. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, all right, should we talk a little movie bracket? Yes. All right. Um, we have some very. Uh, we had some very close races uh this we had last time around i was i was sh- like i thought for uh, you know there are, there's the odd time i'm gonna have to count votes but mostly it'll just be able to tell by percentages and somebody will win and it'll be fine there were three battles this week where i had to actually figure out what how many votes were based on the percentages and see how the the end result was so well um, not one i demand a recount oh well i did it i i checked it twice I, I I totally santed that one. Who is your auditor? Uh, me. Oh, see, that's, I don't know. That's what it is. That's that's what it is. And uh, as Nicole, I, I did it out on my deck while enjoying a gin. So I'm pretty sure it's right. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it's gotta <laughs> okay, be. Okay, it's gotta be. Uh, all right. So we took 32 of the best football movies out there, and they are competing for supremacy. Uh, bracket, of course, is posted to our social media, and uh, we had four battles last week. Um, last week's winners. Now we had longest var- yard versus longest yard. Um, and, uh, from 74 and 2005, the 2005 version won out by a total of nine votes. Recount. Weird. Yeah. No, that, that one was, <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's going to be a fun edit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, then the next one, uh, we had best of times going up against the game plan. Uh, this one, I, I, now, we didn't have the same number of overall votes, but I couldn't believe how close that one was. Best of Times won out by two votes. And That's insane. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. It was, it had won by four votes, I think, on on uh, Facebook and lost by two votes on Twitter. <laughs> like it, it was so close. It was crazy. Um, so best of times moves on. Uh, next one was radio uh, versus gridiron gang, which, uh, as I said on the YouTube live, I got yelled at a lot for putting those two together in the first yeah, round. Yeah. Uh, welcome to random choices and brackets. Yes. Yep. Uh, radio wins that one by five votes. Very close. These are all super close. It tells you it was a good match. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. then the last one was a landslide for Remember the Less teams. of a good match, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which we kind of assumed. But let me tell you, when we get to that next round, and Remember the Titans has to go up against Radio? Yeah. That, oh. that wow. is, that is, oh, that, I think that'll be a very, very close match. It'll be, but anyway, the, the point of that all is that every vote counts. So make sure that you are jumping on and putting your votes in. Uh, so this week or this two weeks, I guess we're going to start on Tuesday with the Renee Zellweger match, uh, cause she is the love interest in both of the movies in our first, set, uh, first set. Uh, first one is Jerry Maguire, which of course is a 96 rom-com with Tom Cruise as an athlete agent. Uh, of course it coins the phrase, show me the money. 
Absolutely. Uh, and that is going up against Leatherheads, which is a 2008 rom-com filled on uh, film, film, filled. What am I talking about? 2008 <laughs> rom-com film based on football in the 1920s. It stars George Clooney and John Krasinski. Uh, football is kind of failing. And so the team brings in a local war hero uh, to try and save the team and the league. And uh, it sounds very, I've only seen bits of it. I actually have to watch that one all the way through it is before good. the vote comes on. So it's sort of based on some real people back in the day. Okay. Um, Ironically, guys that played for the Eskimos, just not the Edmonton oh. Eskimos. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Based on guys uh, like James Blood uh, Ulmer. No, that's a blues player. Um, uh, and Ernie Nevers and guys like that uh, who played in the 20s and everything else. So it's I mean, it's a really good story. It's light. It's fun. And uh, I mean, how many movies do you watch that are, you know, set in the 20s? Yeah. Very true. Very, right up here. Oh, John Krasinski? Like, what? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I feel like my votes are getting changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see? She's going to watch. We're going to see what happens. Captain Archer in one. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's right. Captain. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Friday, our next battle will come out, which is, uh, again, this would be an interesting one. Uh, Rudy from 1993, of course, a drama starring Sean Astin as an undersized player that works to play for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and, of course, does mm-hmm. at the end. Uh, spoiler. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen, who are totally voting in a football movie bracket and haven't seen Rudy. Or could have wow. guessed that ending. Yes. Yeah. Um, now that one's going up against Paper Lion, which is a 1968 comedy movie uh, starring Alan Alda as a writer that decides to play football so he can write about the experience of being right on the field. And he does, I guess the, the whole idea is he did boxing beforehand and basketball. And so now he picks football. Yeah. Uh, again, for people of a certain generation like mine, <laughs> most people. What are you talking was, about? This was the year the, before you were born. No, I know, but the book was written oh. by George Plimpton. And later on, Plimpton was most famous for doing all the commercials for the Intellivision. Right. So if you remember that sort of studious, stuffy guy with the white hair <laughs> in the commercials, that's the guy that wrote the book and was actually on the Detroit Lions. Oh, cool. Okay. And, you know, just got creamed. So, yes. Oh, and the uh, the player that was for the Duluth Eskimos was Johnny Blood McNally. That was his oh, name. That's ooh. George Bye. Clooney's character. Okay. Johnny Blood McNally. That's in. Yeah. There's, there's those uh, interesting nicknames again that came out yeah. when they played in the early days. One guy was Blood. One guy was Sand. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Blood and sand. Yeah. Perfect. Like, yeah. It's, a, it's a cocktail. Yeah. Spartacus there. <laughs> Interesting pull. Spartacus. Blood and circus. Yeah. yeah it's Blood and good. sand. Yeah, it's good. Well, um, all right. The following Monday, we will have uh, two very polar opposite movies. Thank you, Random Generator. Uh, I should have actually switched these around now that I think about it. But anyway, um, Necessary Roughness from 1991, a comedy yep. about a team of misfits taking on the top team in the land versus Any Given Sunday, which is from 1999, a drama uh, that most football players that we've talked to anyway say it's the closest to what really happens on a team. Uh, Al Pacino is the coach dealing with all of the team drama and his ongoing issues with the team owner. Uh, and it's an amazing movie. Yeah, it's not. I don't want to have any spoilers. For people, you know, haven't watched the uh, YouTube live where we give our predictions. Right. But I think this movie might do well. You think? <laughs> yeah. Weird. Okay. I, I, I think. Did I oversell it? Do you think? Is that what it was? Yeah, that must be the reason. That's it. Okay. Yeah. That's what Your I think. Yeah. So outside. necessary roughness has this great. Yeah, I can't do it. Forget it. Yeah. No, it's a good movie. It was. It was funny. It's got Kathy Ireland as, as a feel, as a football player, which to me mostly should get extra votes. It should. It does to fourteen-year-old me. Let me tell you. <laughs> I bet it is. I can tell you that right now. Extra points. All right. Um, 
Then our final battle, uh, as we get into the Thursday before we record, um, we start with a 2000 comedy, The Replacements, starring Keanu Reeves and Gene Hackman. Uh, is the uh, Now, Keanu Reeves is the quarterback that is hired for the replacement team when the pro league players go on strike, uh, and hilarity ensues. Shane Falco, baby. Absolutely. Bring on Falco. Uh, I... I one of the, my favorite parts of this movie or one of my favorite characters in this movie though is the linebacker that is the cop and he's just right. like absolutely insane and it's yeah it's the funniest <laughs> go get me that ball i'll get you that ball and he just yells at everybody and then goes and does what he's gonna do. yeah oh, he's... orlando jones was great in that oh one yeah too. and and the first time that i learned that you could do the electric slide to i will survive is uh, exactly. It's very, <laughs> life lessons. It's very, very. That's a very important lesson to have. Because let me tell you, <laughs> there was many a time DJing a wedding that that worked out real well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I just felt like I was right in that jail cell doing that. Anyway, did you? Uh, some days. Uh, anyway, the, we. That's a whole other story. So the replacements is going to go up against the express, which is a 2008 drama based on the real story of college football hero, Ernie Davis, who is the first African American to win the Heisman trophy. Uh, and, uh, quite a story for sure. Very powerful. Um, the, the, the lead actor was just absolutely outstanding as Ernie Davis. It's a great story. Um, much like when we, uh, uh, saw Brian song in the first set of mm-hmm. eight uh, where you have that sort of real, very emotional, powerful story. Uh, I think it's a great one. I mean, maybe those two would have been uh, good ones to go up against each other, but uh, who knows? Maybe this one will go further. Yeah. Who knows? It's going to be very, very interesting. So, uh, so if you want to figure out what, who we all voted for, including Lucius Floyd, uh, you can check out the YouTube live and uh, it, uh, we will tell you all the ones that we picked for these coming yep. battles. And of course we will have new battles in a couple of weeks uh, where we will finish out the first round of 32. So that's uh, going to be very fun. Um, I think that's it guys. We kind of have reached the end. Um, it's been good. It has been. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty pumped after talking to Lucius there. <laughs> he gets, yeah. Like, he's uh, pretty motivating. It's true. Yeah. Uh, just, I've, I've talked to him for quite a while on fantastic. Facebook, but um, you know, just getting to talk to him one-on-one or, you know, three-on-one. Uh, uh, whoa. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just, you know, just hearing the passion and the excitement for what was as well as what he's doing now. I, it's just outstanding. Yeah. Anytime we get to talk to these guys and, uh, and get, and, and have them tell their own story. Yeah. I think that's the, I think that's the part that really gets me when we're, when we're chatting with them and, and they tell you about what it was like walking into Commonwealth and, um, on the YouTube mm-hmm. when he said, you know, the 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 ghosts of the champions in the locker room it's like right. all of us i'm sure all had goosebumps and you bet. Um, uh that to me I, I i just really appreciated him taking all that time to uh to chat with us and uh he's he's an amazing dude and we'll we'll have to have him back maybe we'll get him and jed on at the same time and see what oh happens. yes oh, wow. <laughs> oh, there we go now we're talking we, we get will him shut and... our faces that's what will happen that's what <laughs> that's right. yeah we should get him and damon on at the same time there you go oh, they can okay. all just you like this I like it. Yes. Oh, I forgot yeah. to I forgot to ask him if he was out on the field when they did the D's nuts with Gizmo. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Next time. We'll we'll catch him next time. Uh so thank you again to Lucius Floyd. Make sure you follow him on Facebook. It's Lucius Floyd the third. That's L U C I U S F L O Y D. So uh, I I I Exactly. So uh, follow him on Facebook. He's amazing. And uh, and he's he's a fun dude to talk to. So uh, make sure you do that. Uh, where can everybody find the two of you on the Twitters? Let's start with you, Commissioner. Oh, who knows these days, really? <laughs> so, well, basically, well, not hopefully on the you. Twitters. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know, man. <laughs> well, we know you don't know the other, the second one, but usually you know your first one pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you possibly may be able to find me <laughs> at uh, Duchess Lombardi, and uh, my second is at S Empire Photo. Ooh. 
Did I do it? Voice. Somebody write it on the calendar. It's amazing. I didn't even first shot, and first you didn't shot, even dude. look. I know you weren't even. I didn't looking. Even look. I was concentrating really hard. <laughs> you know, in this in this moment, I feel very proud of you as an Thank older you. brother. That I, was amazing. I feel, I feel proud of myself. I'm not That's gonna good. lie. <laughs> you, you should. You should. No pressure now. Exactly. <laughs> Super fan. I don't remember. No. Uh, you can find me. At 56 Parkies and then the, uh, all the history stuff at Esk's History. Perfect. And, of course, you can find me at Free Palicious and the show at Esk Empire Pod. Uh, make sure you are following Pay It Forward with Football on uh, Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, they've, uh, they still are, are contributing out stuff to kind of keep us all entertained. So follow mm-hmm. them for sure. Uh, check out all of the great hoodies and masks and all those things at JR Sports. Um, you can find that at RenfroFootball.com. Uh, of course, on his Instagram as well. Uh, there's lots of good shows coming out on the Canadian Football Podcast Network, especially when we're talking about all of these changes. And I, I'm assuming over the next two weeks, there's going to be a lot of shows coming out there. Uh, check sure. them out at CFPodNetwork.ca. And of course, make sure you check out all of the great shows on the the Alberta Podcast Network at albertapodcastnetwork.com. There it is. You know what I like now is when I do that, both of you shake your heads the same way. Yeah. Did we? Pretty, yeah. <laughs> both of you move your head. Yeah. It's pretty funny. How can we not? Um, and I do want to uh, say um, w- Alberta Podcast Network now has a, a new tagline, which is, uh, yeah. you know, locally grown, community supported. And, uh, you know, when I, when I first read that, I thought, you know, that, uh, that really does sum us up. We're, yeah. we're we've started locally. We're here locally. We've kind of grown as as a group and doing new things and doing YouTube live and all that stuff. But we couldn't have done any of that without the community support and uh, that's true. The, the the team support, the CFL family support, um, and so you know we really appreciate you. And I I, I love that tagline because it it really suits us as well. It's awesome. Uh, you can check, of course, all of our social channels out on eskempire.ca. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, hopefully with some news on where we are going with some uh, football games. Uh, if we, It looks like we're making progress, but we don't know for sure. We might delay that one a couple of days just to make yeah. sure that we're talking about the latest thing. But Good plan. Hopefully back in a couple of weeks. So in the meantime, make sure you stay safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face. And for Lucius Floyd, Commissioner Kayla and Super fan mike i'm andrew remember you can't catch footballs with your face and we will absolutely talk to you in two weeks thanks for listening find more great shows like this at cf pod network on twitter 